My name is uh, Robert M. Springer, Jr., and I'm a retired Army Colonel 06. And then something of very surprising happened. Uh, General MacArthur's uh, headquarters had planned an invasion of Inchon, which is south of Seoul, the capital, about 100 miles north of where we were, and on the uh, on the west coast. Uh, so uh, the army, a good part of the army, landed, did an amphibious landing at Inchon, and which effectively cut off the communist troops that we were fighting against. They were they were cut off by that Inchon landing, which cut their supply lines, and they were surrounded by our troops. And at that, about that time, uh, the uh, regiment I was with, we attacked northward um, and broke through their lines. And I was with the infantry company, and we, one morning, uh, we were given the order to attack at dawn, which, into the enemy trenches, which we did. And the resistance was very light because they were trying to get away. Uh, and we attacked northward, uh, and pretty soon we started taking hundreds and hundreds of prisoners. I myself captured about two or three of them and interviewed them. Uh, and then we sent them back to prisoners of war camp. So we, then we were heading north as fast as we could go because we had broken through, there was no more resistance. In fact, there was no more resistance all the way up to the 38th parallel, a city called Quezon. And so we we advanced, this, our regiment advanced and took the city of Quezon on the 38th parallel. And there we rested it for a few days because at that time it wasn't sure whether the war would be over since we recovered all of South Korea back from the communists, or whether we were going to attack further north uh, and go into uh, you know, the present day of North Korea. And so after a couple days, which we got the rest up, we got the word that uh, our regiment was to lead the attack north across the 38th parallel with the idea of, re of capturing the entire North Korea. So we attacked north, and that was a very uh, tricky business because the North Koreans had fortified the 38th parallel with concrete emplacements. Uh, actually, in the previous 10 years, they had been fortifying that border, so they just took over the position, pre-prepared positions. And uh, the regiment I was with, uh, Easy Company of the 8th Cavalry Regiment, it turned out we were the lead company of the division, and which by that time we'd broken contact, so we didn't know exactly where they were. So we got orders to uh, get down on the main highway going into the North Korean capital, which is about 150 miles north of us, get down the main highway about 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, march in columns on either side of the highway, and keep going until we met resistance. Well, that's not a very good way to do things, because it's better if you take the high ground on both sides of the road and attack that way. So you can't be ambushed, but they were, we were in a big hurry because we thought we could envelop the North Koreans. So they, our commanders decided to dispense with the normal precautions of taking the high ground and just go right, sit right up on the road and when we met resistance, call up the tanks and knock it out and go forward. So we attacked the down the road in the dark, 
marching quietly. And uh, as we went down, started to get, the dawn started to break. And uh, we, I, that really said we could hear the clicking of rifles on either side of the road. And they weren't our, they weren't our guns that were clicking, it was the enemy. And all of a sudden, they allowed us to go inside of their positions. And then they opened up from both sides of our column and uh, we lost a lot of people. Uh, there was heavy, really heavy fighting, a lot of casualties. Uh, as we tried to, uh, at that, by that time we, were, we knew we had to take the high ground, so we got off the road and started tacking up the, into these trenches on either side of the road. And eventually we were able to uh, take, take the trenches with regular hand-to-hand -hand infantry fighting and my uh, I had a three-man team and my radio man was killed instantly in the first barrage of machine gun fire he was standing next to me and the company commander was uh, badly wounded and almost all of the officers and many of the NCOs but we continued to attack and uh, by the time evening came, we had taken one of the hills on the right side of the road. And so we prepared for to continue the attack at dawn the next morning, which we did across an open field. And by that time, I had good, I registered the artillery, and we had good, good artillery support, plus we brought up a couple of tanks. And so we were able to, uh, smashed through the, uh, the fixed fortifications they had built, these concrete pillboxes. Uh, we attacked through those and, uh, and Matt went, went about a mile that day after we broke through the, the pillboxes. And, and they also, we didn't kill the enemy because most of them retreated and ran before we could get to the pillboxes. Uh, so the next morning, that night, we, that day we advanced for five or six miles up into North Korea. And uh, it was, we just had a little bit of resistance along the way, mostly uh, from mines that they planted in the roads, which blew up some of our vehicles. <coughs> that night, we took defensive positions, and the next day, uh, about three o'clock in the morning, uh, I was on a hill to, to the right side of the road, about 100 feet high, not very far off the road, and we were bumped down. We couldn't dig foxholes because of ground was shale, too difficult, we couldn't dig. And uh, the runner from the, co the commander told me there's an armored column coming down the road with enemy tanks right to our position. So I uh, called for artillery fire at 3 o'clock in the morning as it was. It was still <coughs> real dark. We couldn't see the tanks. Pretty soon we heard them coming down the road toward our position. And uh, I got wonderful support from the artillery. And they, they zeroed in all of the weapons they could within 20 miles of us, 15 miles. We had uh, heavy howitzers and eight inch guns even. And uh, but the tanks were traveling pretty fast. <clears throat> and so, we, and I couldn't see them. I was just firing on the road, which I kept using the map. And then suddenly, right in front of us, uh, around the bend of the road, we saw the first tank emerge, about 50 to 100 feet from where I was. And as soon as the tank came around the road, there was a huge explosion. 
because what I didn't realize was that uh, we had pulled our tanks up in defensive positions about 300 yards behind where I was, and there were, I think, M26 General Patton tanks, 90 millimeter guns, and they were much faster in uh, real realizing what was happening than the communists were. So as these T-34 uh, Russian-built tanks came around the bend, each, each time they came around the bend, our gunners would knock them out. And so there were, before I knew it, there were three T-34 uh, uh, tanks uh, burning, exploding, ammunition inside was exploding. The troops uh, inside were trying to run out and get out of the tanks. They threw open the hatches, but the tanks were burning. It was a real bedlam, chaos really for them. And uh, pretty soon, the, by the time the fuel uh, caught fire and uh, all the ammunition that exploded, there was not much left. Uh, so within a couple of hours, uh, we had no casualties. And we picked up and we started advancing north again. By that time, we knocked out almost all of the resistance and we advanced further up to Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea. And uh, were billeted in uh, a former Soviet uh, military advisor mission headquarters. It was a whole Russian headquarters in Pyongyang where the, the Russian advisors have been used as their headquarters for advising the communists. And it was all full of Russian magazines because they pulled out in a hurry pictures of uh, communist leaders on the wall uh, and had a nice big uh, fireplace. So we stayed there for uh, about a month or maybe not that long, I can't remember. And then, uh, then we got orders to uh, move up to the Yalu River 